As you can see behind me, the scene is still under investigation and the forensic team is looking for more evidence. Police say the woman and her three children were not heard in this home invasion. Two days after the deadly robbery that went down here at Barcelona restaurant, police have released a video hoping someone can identify the people who committed this horrific crime. We learned from ICE this morning that Martinez is a Mexican national who had entered the United States illegally. ICE now has a hold on Martinez. In Winnet County, Miguel Sandy 7, Fox 5 News. Police say this is the parking lot where the victim was shot in the leg after a man demanded for his watch. La implosión del Georgia Dome se llevará a cabo el 20 de noviembre y el mayor reto que ellos tienen será este espacio que ustedes ven entre el Dome y el nuevo estadio Mercedes-Benz. A Marta police officer was hit by this vehicle you see behind me as he was leading a funeral procession in his motorcycle. So here I am at the Yankee Glass Blowing Studios where the expert Matt Yankee performs magic and turns these pieces of glass into beautiful art. Residents say there were at least 20 car break-ins in this neighborhood over the weekend, and they say the whole police step up patrols. From Fox 5, this is breaking news. We are on Emory Lane where four children and one man were found dead inside their mobile home after an apparent stabbing. Police have the children's mother in custody. You know, this is a horrendous crime. This is something that we, we never expected. Winnet County Police say they don't usually receive calls from this neighborhood, but that changed today. At 4.47 this morning, we received a 911 call from inside the house. Uh, the original call came in as several people been stabbed inside the house. Police tell us the children involved in this massacre are all under the age of 10. Neighbors are still taken from this heartbreaking incident. I feel sad. So many kids. Poor kids. Detectives found one child alive with several stab wounds. That child was taken to an area hospital where he or she is in serious condition but is being treated for these injuries. Authorities took the mother to the Winnet County Police Headquarters where they will interview her. What her motivations are for um, committing this horrendous crime, we still don't know. Neighbors describe the 33-year-old woman as friendly. However, they did say her behavior had changed since her father in Mexico died a few weeks ago. The woman was very kind, very educated, with good manners with everyone. When she would see us, she would say, hello, good afternoon, hello, good morning. She did not show any signs that she would do something like that. Crime scene investigators are still inside the home looking for more details on what happened. In Loganville, this is Miguel Sandy 7 reporting for Good Day Atlanta. This is one of the most dangerous intersections here in Douglas County. Another crash just happened right here when a bus was trying to make a right, and then a truck coming from that direction hit it. Thankfully, the bus driver took action and saved all the kids. <laughs> this video shows the moment of impact when this Douglas County school bus was hit by a pickup truck Friday afternoon. During the chaos, Bus driver Sharonda Crawford Richardson acted calm and made sure her riders, her babies, were okay. The bus actually went over. We thought it was going to roll, and I can only think about the children because I didn't have time to even warn them or tell them that this was happening. It just happened. Crawford Richardson was turning at the corner of Maxon Road and Old Alabama Road when the crash happened. She saw smoke, and that was when she decided to quickly get the kids off the bus. I didn't think it was that bad, but it just got worse. The bus was definitely on fire, so I told the kids to run. Fortunately, there were no injuries. Crawford Richardson credits the kids for following directions and calls them the real heroes. And just grateful, you know, that things turned out as well as it did. In Douglas County, Miguel Santis 7. Channel 2 Action News. As we get closer to the grand opening of the Mercedes-Benz Stadium, police are finally ready to put a plan in action to keep everyone safe. We've been uh, working on this for a couple of years, and we're finally here. Atlanta Police Captain Reginald Mormon, the senior public safety official for the Falcons' new home, told us the amount of security planning ahead of opening day will pay off. 
we're monitoring everything that's happening around the world so that so that we're ready here in Atlanta for anything that, that may come our way. Local, state, and federal authorities develop a massive security strategy. You'll see cement barricades up outside the stadium, as well as metal detectors, checkpoints, and surveillance cameras to protect the crowds from any attacks. I think that you can never be prepared enough but I think we're as close to it as we could possibly be. Mormon is confident fans will have a world-class experience while visitors can't hide their excitement. I think it's magnificent. I think it's uh, spectacular. Other fans are also grateful for the public safety efforts that, to them, seem under control. I'm actually not concerned about it. I mean, I know the city has everything under control, and I'm really looking forward to sharing that. Police also have a plan to keep traffic flowing and make sure people get in and out the stadium as fast as possible. In downtown Atlanta, Miguel Sandy 7, Channel 2 Action News. Una familia en el condado de Jackson está de luto. Ellos exigen respuestas después de encontrar a sus mascotas muertas a balazos y tirados en la carretera. Nuestra reportera Patty Penn nos cuenta. Sucedió después de que los perros se salieran del antejardín de la casa. Gracias, Pari. Ahora en Luciana, donde el gobernador declarará en estado de emergencia a la ciudad de New Orleans, donde el sistema de bombeo de agua necesita reparaciones costosas urgentemente. Los altos niveles de lluvia esta semana ocasionaron inundaciones porque 20 de las 121 bombas de drenaje no estaban en función. Varios líderes de la ciudad han perdido su puesto por el grave problema. Aún no se sabe si el mal tiempo ha sido contribuyente, pero la policía de Sandy Springs ha cerrado todas las líneas de tránsito entre Powers Ferry Road y Dupree Drive por una abertura en la calle. Equipos de bomberos midieron el hoyo y determinaron que era lo suficientemente grande para declararlo peligroso para transitar. Al regresar, él ha pasado casi 50 años en búsqueda de eclipses. Le presentaremos al hombre que más añora la llegada de este fenómeno. Good morning. From Fox 5 News, this is Good Day Atlanta at 7 a.m. And the family of a man murdered in Cobb County is offering a $10,000 reward to help find his killer. We're following some breaking news on the downtown connector. A man is hit and killed near 10th Street. New this morning, a family argument ended in gunfire in Northeast Atlanta. Police called the shooting justifiable. They tell us the man broke into a house in Beachwood Forest Drive early yesterday morning. The homeowner told police he encountered the man in the basement and pulled the trigger because the man continued to approach him. Coming up, they seem like a high-tech phone, but the FBI has a warning for parents and caregivers about smart toys. First, how does a smuggler get contraband into a state prison in just under four minutes? By using a drone. This is Channel 2 Action News. Coverage you can count on. Good evening, I'm Devon Raming. Miguel Santi Seven, two men are now dead and two others injured after a concert shooting at the Masquerade Club in underground Atlanta. Investigators are processing four crime scenes that they pieced together. One led to concert shooting in Las Vegas that killed 59 people. Right now, the Cobb County police are questioning a teenager in the shooting death of a 16-year-old. Investigators say the 17-old shot Jules Jefferson in the head last night in Jefferson's bedroom at this Lutania house. Police say the two knew each other. We're less than a week from the runoff to determine Atlanta's next mayor. The changes both candidates are promising if elected. 